All right, guys, today I'm going to show you the next part of our project. So this is the outlining part and then coloring part. So I was working on outlining here, but I have a few more things left. Now I have two different types of outlining markers available for you guys. Uh, one's an ultra fine, one's just a regular fine tip. Okay? Most of the work that I've done is with a fine tip. It's a little bit a thicker, um, bolder line. And then I have these ultra fines that have a really tiny tip on it. Okay, these are really good for small details. And for example, right here on the top of the barn, I really need to use one of these smaller ones in order for me to keep the details in my work. Okay, If I were to go with the bigger one, I might lose all my details. So it's very important that if you have small things, uh, you go to the ultra fine, and then everything else can be done with the bigger one. Uh, just kind of be aware of, of what you have going on and what kind of details you have there. So I'm just going to finish up these last little details here with this ultra fine. And then I'm going to do the sun right here. Okay. Okay. And then any other details up front, I could draw with this tiny one as well. So like some little grass here. Uh, let's me see all the details in the foreground. Okay. Now, once you're done with the outlining, then it's time to color. It's almost like a big coloring page that you created by yourself. Uh, the options available are markers. So we have two different types of markers or sizes of markers uh, that you could use. Uh, again, small details use the, the thin markers and then the broad tip ones for the bigger areas. Okay. Um, you can also use colored pencils if you'd like. Uh, just make sure that you go a little bit darker so then uh, we can capture the image of those colors in there. And if you want to use crayons, we also have crayons available as well. So in this artwork, I'm going to show you how to do maybe a, a sunset or a sunrise. So instead of always doing a blue sky, we could come in with uh, different colors there. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a broad line uh, marker here. And I'm going to do my sun here. I'm going to leave a little white in there. And then the next row. So I drew a little pencil line that kind of went through here. I don't want that to actually show up, but I just want to kind of divide the areas up so then I can kind of fill them in uh, as needed. So I'm going to go yellow with the sun. And then I think I'm going to go, maybe I'm going to do, I'll try maybe this color here. This might kind of be fun to see and test it out. Kind of right off here because it's really light. I'm just going to go up to this pencil line. Notice how I kind of outline my work and then I fill it in with nice even lines. Okay. And then it also runs just a little bit right here and then it runs right over here. If you want a nice even line, I like to put it on its side sometimes and go like this. Let's go back and forth. Quick and easy. And I think I want to go over to maybe a pink in there as well. Sometimes you'll get a pink in their skies. So I'm going to go and just kind of get a line going first of all. Go right over here. And then right against this right here. So I just outline it first. And then I fill in my areas like this. It just kind of it makes it nice and easy to work this way. And I think it looks better in the end too. Getting all those little white areas as much as you can. Okay, about right to there. And then I think I could do, I could go into blue after that if I wanted to. Uh, I do have a red here. Let's see how that looks. I don't know. I think I might just go right into the red. That'd be kind of neat up here. Now I have available, it just kind of nicely goes. Ooh, I went right on top of that. It actually worked out pretty good there. I can still see the black through there. Go like this. I'm going to leave these clouds white. So I'm going to leave them alone. Sometimes you have to turn your marker if it starts to get it dry a little bit. If you always stay on one side, it might need time to recover like this and like that. Okay. I really like that look on there. There's some other things too. Um, 
when you're doing your ground, like the grass here, I have two different types of green. So if I was going to do these two different types, I would probably use the darker one that's closer to us and the lighter one off in the distance. For example, this right here is a different green. So I'm just going to use different shades of the green to show distance and depth in my work. So that's a good start there as well. All right, so can't wait to see how you guys do on your coloring of your landscapes today.